Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel Outside the Target Demographic. Today we're going to be talking about my initial impressions with my first attempt at a Palmetto State Armory dagger. So let's get started. As I covered in a previous video, this is the first Palmetto State Armory dagger system that I have fully put together. Uh, I had covered the other two options for the lowers as I got them in a three pack. But um, yesterday I had a friend over, we did the first shooting with this guy and I'd like to cover uh, what worked well and just as importantly, what didn't work quite so well. So right off the rip, um, the upper that I got was this one and by waiting for it to go on sale, it was $80 off. That $80 off is the reason that I don't have the plate here. I do have the plate here but I don't have the plate here because with that $80 I saved, I'm able to buy a red dot site that's usually $120 off of Amazon that happened to be on a discount. So Palmetto State Armory is making it really, really easy to get into the firearm game, to learn about firearms, to get into the sport, to get into shooting. And I, th they're absolutely an asset to the second amendment. Absolutely look into them, palmettostatearmory.com. This whole setup that you see before you, uh, I got each one of the lowers for $170 as a three pack. So call that $60 each with a $40 transfer for paperwork through a FFL uh, gun store. So that puts me at $100 for the lower. This upper was $220. And so you're looking at less than $350 right here. This light is uh, not included in that pricing. I just put it on today. but. Even when I put the red dot on here, I'm just over $400. I want to say a Glock 19 out of the box is 600 plus dollars, uh, depending on availability and with COVID and Biden, uh, prices may and very likely will vary. But for less than $350, this thing, fantastic. Runs like a top right out of the box, except when it didn't. And again, we'll get into that. What I did want to do is show you, I got the um, sniper green with the copper barrel, and I really like the contrast there. Very nice. What I don't see, what I don't feel is machining cuts. I don't feel any metal that's going to, you know, rip my hand apart as I try racking the slide. Everything is smooth. The finish is very, very good. Um, very high quality at a very affordable price. What I'm going to be doing now is I do want to disassemble. I am going to show clear. All right, so there is no brass in there. I'm going to pull back, pull down, pull back, push forward. Okay, so this is with about 75 rounds through the gun and I got the threaded barrel. I would recommend the threaded barrel. I will get into why I did the threaded barrel. You will not be able to disassemble the slide without removing your muzzle device, or in this case, without removing the muzzle thread cover. Push down, pull it through, and that is essentially your filled strip. Um, what I wanna show you is how well things have been holding up over those 75 rounds. Lots of black there and the finish is already not holding up super well kind of disappointing truth be told but it is a finish it is a uh, surface coating it is not the material itself it's not milled out of copper right because then i would have had a fragmentation grenade in my hands so uh to me it is character i don't super duper mind it's proof that i actually use my tools so i am not super concerned with it this is less than 100 rounds. Um, I imagine the damage has been done. It's not like the whole thing is going to uh, score off or be degraded away. It, where it uh, contacts is kind of going to be the same place. So you shouldn't be seeing any more damage. Um, what I will also tell you as a learning experience, Every part that has a little bit of um, the material removed is parts that you need to be lubing, right? 
So this is clearly a metal on metal. This is clearly the barrel contacting the slide. So for those of you new to the sport, for those of you who are trying to learn about firearms, uh, a lot of things happen very, very quickly every time you fire. The slide is going to reciprocate. That reciprocation is going to cause metal on metal dragging, and you are going to have a little bit of scoring there. So any kind of lube, oil, grease, whatever you have in your bag, go ahead and make sure that you hit those points really good because you already know that those points are friction points, are metal on metal contact points, right? Other than that, um, it's a little dirty and you can clearly see the rifling there. So I will need to clean it up a little. I don't see any dragging or anything on the feed ramp, which is ideal. We do have a little bit of uh, dirt there, which we don't have anymore. So literally two wipes with a paper towel with no cleaning solution wiped right off. We have a little bit of fouling buildup right there, which again, wiped right off. So, uh, probably it's only been sitting for, you know, 12 hours. It really wouldn't have had time to calcify or anything, but possibly a testament to the build quality, the metallurgy and the, um, surface coating, that stuff just wiped right off. Very nice. I'll be able to clean out, and that was this, by the way. I'll be able to clean out the um, barrel rifling rather easily, but all of this wiped up rather easily as well. I'm gonna do the crown. Crown was not bad. Okay, your recoil spring, and then the slide honestly isn't too bad. Let's start with a clean portion. That is the grandfather clock followed by the cuckoo clock. Everyone should have one. I'm gonna get up inside the rails here along the back of the slide where the firing pin goes and all that. Okay, so Less than 100 rounds. Um, they do get quite dirty. Turns out gunpowder doesn't always burn completely every time, so you're gonna have a little bit of buildup. Uh, with the green coating and the uh, bronze coating there, the dirt really stands out, which again is kind of a character thing for me. Um, your opinion may vary, but I don't mind it, and I feel like these odd color combinations really make the um, fouling and dirty areas much easier to find and clean. But even without real scrubbing, it all came up. This is just showing you how dirty it is. A lot of that is oil, to be fair. Um, so it's not necessarily always going to be that dirty. Uh, the black stuff is fouling, but the rest of it is most of the oil that I just wiped off of everything. I don't really see any kind of paint transfer off the finish. So that's reassuring. Again, less than 100 rounds, I really wouldn't expect there to be too much, but um, cleaned up rather nicely. And then again, you'll have to run a brush through the barrel there. Um, I will say, let's get to uh, what didn't work so well. And to do that, I will be right back. What I found yesterday is in this configuration, the stock configuration right out of the box, a little bit of lube ran flawlessly, actually snapped less than I thought it would. Um, it is rather lightweight. Uh, I don't have my scale available and apparently due to the uh, comments that I've heard, my scale is wildly inaccurate. So I'm not gonna bother with it, but I would say this feels lighter than it looks, if that makes any sense. And it should because there are lightning cuts. There's one, two, three, four rather large pieces of metal that have been milled out of this slide. A nice chunk of metal has been milled out here for a red dot optic and then some lightning cuts along the side here. The added benefit to that is I now have two places that I can rack, three, ah, three places that I can now rack the slide. The typical, do, 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 the typical mills that you have allow you to rack back here. This one is not super sharp, but I would say it's arguably better than these. This is more of a honeycomb consistency, not super deep, works perfectly fine. But if you get up here, you now have uh, 
on the corner as well as on the side, a very meaty area for you to get a very good grip on, be it with the human hand or with shooting gloves. Um, you will also notice, yes, I'm going to point this at you, the curvature on the front leading corners as well as the slope right here. And what that does is makes the slide easier to put into a holster. So if I'm trying to put this block into a holster, it might not fit as well as having something that's more slender to begin with that then forces the holster open. Giggity. So they already thought that through too. Um, doesn't quite match with the angling in the plastic there. Just the least littlest amount off, but now that my OCD has detected it, so too shall yours. But um, I with those lightning cuts, this thing is very balanced. And by that, I mean, typically, I feel like with that Glock 17, when I don't have a magazine in it, it seems very top heavy, as it should. All the metals up here, the bottom is plastic with a couple metal components. So very nicely balanced. The ergonomics of the full-sized grip so far have been fantastic. It's not blocky, which is the thing I do not care for with the Glock. It's very squared off. It's very brick. Um, this one seems more uh, modern, I guess. And it's not really showing up on camera quite so well. But uh, you have the widest point and then it tapers off both sides um, front and rear rather quickly. It's just, it's more ergonomic. It feels more um, maybe like a bicycle handlebar versus a two by four, like the brick, almost like a human hand is supposed to be interacting with this. How about that? Um, the controls are very accessible. I don't have to change my shooting grip to uh, access any of the controls there. So fits my hand very well. Uh, we'll do this. So my fingers three inches wide. Um, up to about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half inches. So uh, size large gloves for what, you know, difference that makes from manufacturer to manufacturer. But um, so far, the ergonomics are fantastic. There are no hot spots on this. The stippling and the sandpaper effect they put into the plastic is very, very nice. Um, the thing I ran into issues with is when I changed it from this to this, and basically I'm a big fan of this linear compensator. I think they're, um, I just ordered three more of them for like $17 each on eBay. They work on an AR-15. I screwed this one off of my AR-15, put it onto my, um, sub 2000, uh, Caltech threaded it off of that one and put it on the, this Palmetto State Armory, threaded off this one, and I can put it on my Taurus P, uh, TX-22. So the same muzzle device works on four different ones of my guns right now, and you don't have to time it. I just thread this on until it doesn't spin anymore, and I'm ready to go. I don't have any cuts or grooves or striations that I have to turn it and tune it to make sure that the cuts are pointing up. Because if they're pointing this way, it's going to blow the gun sideways. I need them pointing up, so it'll blow the gun down. A2 squirrel cage on the AR-15 has to be tuned in such a manner that all the vents are pointing upwards. I don't have to mess with that. It also makes you look pretty fucking sexy. Uh, it also makes it substantially easier to shoot. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, you're adding more weight to the gun. And that weight is further out. Which means you're less likely to be shaking around and stuff. It really makes the gun super stable. Second, the concussion and uh, unburnt gunpowder and uh, fire gunpowder, stuff like that, blowing out of the front of the gun can distract people, especially new shooters. I like having new shooters out. I've gotten a number of people who either have never handled a gun before or were ardent anti-gunners. No one should have them. By the end of the day, they're asking me, hey, uh, you know, how much should I spend on my first gun? Can you give me suggestions for my first gun? So I brought a lot of people into the community by making it as non-threatening as I can. Plus it helps that I have my own shooting range where you're not expecting the person next to you to be blowing your eardrums every three seconds as you're trying to explain to the person who's never shot before how to handle a gun with bang, bang, bang going off all the time and possibly negligent discharges and all that bullshit. So 
by having a nice safe environment that I can have people out to, I can do one-on-one -on -one counseling with them. I can do one-on-one -on -one trainings with them. I brought a lot of people into the fold and I would suggest and ask that you do as well. So um, the problem I ran into is while the sites are suppressor sites in that my sites will clear the bell of any kind of um, muzzle device that you put on here. And these sites are very nice, by the way. When we put this linear compensator on the gun, we had a 100% failure to eject rate. So what would happen is the gun would fire, and then when you pull the trigger again, I'm gonna show empty. I would fire, when I pull the trigger again, the trigger's dead, it never reset. That's indicative that the slide did not reciprocate all the way back. If the slide did not reciprocate all the way back, it did not eject the spent shell casing. So we had a 100% failure rate. It would either stove pipe or it would keep the brass inside. And it essentially turned my handgun into a bolt action. I would fire once, I'd have to manually rack it, fire once, manually rack it. Really took the fun out of it. There's a couple reasons for that. And I wanted to share this with you guys because it's not a fault of the gun. Um, and it is something that you're going to have to be aware of. It's something that you're going to have to address possibly if you intend to suppress this or put a muzzle device on it. The biggest issue is this is a Browning tilt barrel operating system. So it's not really gonna be easy for me to show, but uh, trust me when I say right now, the barrel is in line with the slide, right? And we can see right here, my finger is pretty flush with the barrel and with the slide. As soon as the gun reciprocates, you can see that the barrel is recessing into the slide, right? So we have a little bit of surface being exposed at the front and the rear. What's happening is when it comes into battery, when the slide is all the way forward and ready to fire again, this is the lock that keeps the uh, slide in place as the projectile leaves the barrel. Once the projectile has left, all of the, uh, I think it's 60 PSI, and uh, eh, PSI of a nine millimeter, that's a lot of pressure. If this started opening, all that pressure is blowing out of this port, eh, no, is blowing out of this port into your face, right? All that explosion, is being contained inside of a barrel designed to contain that pressure and push a chunk of lead out. If this unlocks early, you're gonna have a blown shell casing and possibly that uh, tens of thousands of PSI pressure blowing either up or out from the gun. Could start causing uh, malfunctions, could blow the gun apart, could start damaging components that you now have to replace, all that stuff. So the barrel, is designed at such an angle where when you fire, it will unlock, eject your spent casing, strip a new one off the magazine, load it into the chamber, and then seal back up. The weight of that barrel has just been fundamentally affected by adding a, this is a chunky boy, I wanna say it's like five ounces, three ounces. It's not light. And the same thing that is the benefit of that weight being further out away from you is now the hindrance. Because the pivot point is here, having that weight all the way out there fundamentally alters the weight and the way that that barrel interacts with the slide. So I found when I had this device on there, it was substantially quieter. It was much more comfortable. And I had, uh, my friend was shooting it. I was maybe 10 yards behind him. I removed my hearing protection. And when he fired it, it was loud, but it wasn't a hypersonic pop ear ringing shell shot kind of thing. So while it is not a suppressor and is not nearly the price of a suppressor and requiring the paperwork of a suppressor, the linear compensator absolutely makes a difference. And I will be doing a video on that here shortly, but it does fundamentally alter the way that this system operates. And I had a hundred percent failure rate. Now this is less than a hundred rounds out of this gun. It's still breaking in. The fact that when I took this off, the gun ran like a champ and had no issues with just basic rudimentary oiling. Fantastic. To be trusted, uh, always put several hundred rounds through a gun you're looking to carry for self-defense. But so far, 
I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It seems to be running smoothly and reliably when I don't alter what they did, right? If I drop a uh, LS2 engine into my Subaru Forester and it starts malfunctioning and blowing uh, head gaskets and transmissions and stuff, is that Subaru's fault? I hot-rodded something. I fundamentally altered the makeup of a product that a company was selling. So what I will suggest to you and what I will report back with you on is the more rounds you run through this, the more the spring is going to start uh, breaking in. The um, joints here between the barrel and the slide are going to start working in. The more smoothly things are going to run and the tolerances are going to start opening up enough to allow you to start suspending weight off of something that, again, the barrel wants to tilt down. When I put a weight on the other end of that, it has to fight twice as hard to do that, which is why I could tell it was almost there. If I'm getting a stove pipe, and that is, I don't think I have any spent shell casings anywhere, so we're going to take this. <laughs> so a stove pipe is when your shell casing is kicked out of the gun, but the slide closes fast enough it catches the brass. So it'll look something like this. And all you'll do is that, right? So you swipe that brass out of the way, you loosen up the thing holding that brass, it drops out of the way, do a full rack and drop, and it would have picked up a fresh round off the magazine, and I was good to go. Again, I am gonna show clear. I do not have anything in the magwell. So, the more you run the gun without any accessories on it, the more it's going to free up, the more reliable it's going to become. And then you can start adding stuff on there like this. Um, as I said, I will report back after a couple more hundred rounds to um, show if that is or isn't the case. Uh, do use generous lube and oil on it, giggity, to make sure that everything is running correctly as well. But um, in my experience, this, this was a hoot. My friend is not necessarily the biggest fan of 9mm, or so he says. I handed him a CZ-75B as his first one. He pulled back the hammer, fired at maybe either 10 or 15 yards away, something like that. And he blew up the push pin that was holding the paper plate on the um, pallet that I used. So the pin just went away and the paper plate dropped to the ground. At 10 yards, at 30 feet away, at 45 feet away, unbelievable. So uh, I, I do not believe you. Anyways. I will uh, report back with that, but I have found that in the stock configuration that Palmetto State Armory has delivered this thing in, it was running like a champ. The other thing I will show you is with the threaded barrels, at least my example, it did have an O-ring that you would put first all the way over the threads, and then you would put your thread protector over it until it hits that O-ring and then just give it like another eighth of a turn and everything is vegan kosher, good to go. So far, I am very pleased with the quality, the fitment, and the price of this guy. Like I said, less than $350, minus the uh, flashlight laser combo here. And um, I, I can only imagine what buying a Glock and customizing it to this extent would be. We're looking at several hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Comes out of the box with raised suppressor-ready sights, they will be painted, as I usually do with my guns. Those of you new to the channel, I usually put orange to the front, green to the rear. These are tritium sights. They ended up being orange already with black rear, so I put green on there. And it makes acquiring a sight picture much easier to do when you know that your front is orange and your green is rear. This one's black on black. If I'm shooting into the darkness, if I'm shooting at a tree, if I'm shooting at something not a white wall, it could be difficult to figure out where they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint those real quick as well. But um, so far the sights were fantastic. That front sight is just a blade. Look at how thin that is compared to the front sight of these night sights, these tritium sights. So much thinner blade is going to give you a uh, higher precision, but it's also going to be a little bit easier to find. Whereas these being nice, big and chonky are going to make lining up that sight picture 
faster, but probably with the uh, sacrifice being the increased precision that you could be getting. So I really do like these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint them up and make them look all purdy so that everything is standard across my collection here. But um, so far, very pleasantly surprised with it. Hopefully I can solve the problem of it not having a linear comp uh, running reliably because that's kind of the whole reason I bought this guy. But even then, um, kind of kind of Gucci'd without the Gucci price tag and uh, reliability to boot right out of the box. So that is my initial impressions and initial shooting experience with the Palmetto State Dagger. If uh, any of you guys have had experience with these or have heard anything about them, go ahead and let the community know in the comments section down below. Uh, like I said, less than $350 into this thing and you're ready to go. Um, reliability, customization, uh, character, whatever you want, already ready already. So this is Outside the Target Demographic. I appreciate you guys stopping by. As always, any questions, comments, concerns you have, leave them in the comments section down below and I will catch you guys in the next video.